It's a pleasure to have Frédéric Deglise uh, for his second talk with the title uh, Cartesian Classes in Stable Multiplicative Periods. Thanks, Fabien. So, okay, so we, we, we will still uh, today build the, the ground. So have you as, as you have seen in the talk of uh, Sabrina, uh, one needs these churn classes and Heller classes, and one needs degrees also. So uh, in this course, in this today, I will I will focus on uh, still continuing on churn classes and orientation, and and also the main focus of, this, of the talk will be on uh, cobordism, algebraic cobordism as defined by Wojewski. Uh, so, but first, I would, I'd like to. So yesterday, I did not have time to give uh, uh, an interesting example. So I, 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 ju I just want to come back to this. And uh, so, Mark, Mark, Mark remind me. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. Mark, remind me that uh, uh, there's a, a nice way to build uh, uh, this ring spectra that introduced by I, that I introduced in uh, in uh, in the first talk. Um, and, and it's by looking at realization. And it also g gives me the opportunity to recall that one of the imperatives that has to fulfill uh, motivic homotopy and that, that makes it interesting is that it has to, to incorporate uh, uh, the, f the, the geometry of uh, complex varieties and real varieties. And the, the, there, there are subtle differences between the two. And so let's look uh, at one of the examples I gave, we have, sorry, a field with a real embedding. Okay, in this situation, we have seen that there is a, a real realization of Hay one homotopy, unstable, but uh, of course also stably. So one gets a map from the stable homotopy category of motivic space over K to the usual, let's say, topological, to be clear. A stable homotopy category, and it maps the infinite suspension of some smooth case scheme to uh, infinite suspension of a uh, real point. So, okay, I, I, the plus is for saying that I, I had a, a point. And, and so this, this, uh, this functor is obtained by a co-limit, and as usual in, in, in infinity categories, as you know for most of you, I guess, this kind of functor, so it's monoidal and it's uh, it's, it's, it commutes with co-limits and it always admits a uh, writer drawing. So I, I write it like this. Let's write this sigma upper star and sigma low star. And then uh, we get this uh, uh, singular cohomology of real points, which is a motivic spectra over K, just by looking at sigma low star of the usual island Bermaclan spectrum. Okay. Uh, this uh, this right left adjoint is monoidal, so this this one here is uh, a weak monoidal, and it o automatically implies that this uh, object has an infinity ring structure, for example. Okay, and then the example I wanted to to give you is now I will just leave this as an exercise. Uh, this spectrum here uh, is not orientable. Just an indication, it's important that I took uh, integral coefficient. Okay, so that's for the, so there are, uh, there are spectra which are not orientable and which will want to enter into the, the framework that I, I described today, but in the last course, I will explain wh what you can do with this, uh, with this uh, more general cohomology theory. Okay, and maybe just uh, recall or remark, uh, the Euler class in, oriented, in an, an oriented theory, Euler class in, so let's say EC oriented motivic ring spectra, the Euler class is given of some vector bundle, the X of rank M, it's given by the top churn class, so the churn class of uh, in degree equal to the rank. So this class has uh, appeared in many talks. And it's, I had the question, so it's important to recall this. Okay, so let's back to the, to the course. So today I will, uh, there, there will be two parts, one, one part on some classes and the, the other part on formal group law. So it's, it's uh, 
we are going on we are going on the program of transporting classical stable homotopy into motivic stable homotopy so there are some differences but there also are many similitudes so let's go back to tom spaces and i recall so the, the talk of uh, kirsten so if v over x so it's my my x over s smooth and S some Bay scheme. <coughs> if you have X is a vector bundle, Oops, sorry, recall that we define the tone space of V as the cofiber, homotopy cofiber of V modulo the complement of a zero section. Okay. And it's also isomorphic, A1 equivalent, actually, Nisnevich equivalent to uh, the quotient of a projective completion of V. So that's my notation, maybe it should put it A1, sorry. So this is the projective completion of V modulo projective space of V, okay? <coughs> so this, is, this just follows from uh, more or less excision, okay? And, and this, I'll see this as an object H a1. So there is some uh, there is some uh, possible confusion here. V is an object of X, but I can I can see it as a smooth scheme over S. I do this computation in uh, in this uh, space here. If I want to indicate the base for which I, I where, where which I where I consider that this term space, I I put it here. But usually it's not necessary. Okay. So now let's e. C, be it such an oriented motivic ring spectrum. <coughs> and then, as I said, what you, what, what's nice to have a Como G theory, which is represented by a motivic spectrum, is that it automatically extends to this uh, HA1 category. And so, uh, and also, by the way, uh, this extension maps cofiber sequences into long exact sequence. It doesn't work for fiber sequences in the unstable H1 homotopy category, but it, it does work for this, uh, this category. It's, it's an easy fact about uh, uh, homotopy theory. I let this as an exercise. So what you get is an exact sequence like this. So because this is a cofiber, you can look at the cohomology. I, I, don't I don't make the degree precise here, so I just put star star of a term space. It fits into a long exact sequence. You have a cohomology of a projective space completed. And here you have a cohomology of a non-completed pro projective space. Okay, and let's say this is a pullback along the canonical immersion here. <coughs> okay, but uh, le let's call this uh, no, pi star. <coughs> And now we know we know from the projective bundle theorem that these both these spaces can be seen as uh, E star star X modules, and they are free uh, E star star X modules of rank of respective rank uh, n minus one and uh, n and n plus one here. Uh, uh, and uh, if you if you write the projective bundle formula, you will see that this map uh, new upper star is actually a split epimorphism. So this one pi star is a split monomorphism. So this uh, a priori long exact sequence here, it splits in two short exact sequences like this. Okay, so now I can uh, define the so-called term class. It follows from the existence of term classes. So uh, I, want, I want to give a class here which restrict to a trivial class here. And so the choice is very easy. Term class of V. I just take the relation which, which defined the churn classes. So I take sum from y0 to n of Cy V times minus C1 O minus 1 uh, to the n minus i. Okay, so this class here is non-trivial here, but when you restrict here, by definition, it's trivial. 
So actually, this class, so it lifts uniquely to a class that uh, I can, you know, by Tom Bar, V, which leaves. Uh, so actually, this this class was in degree two n n, so it lives in degree two n n term of v, where n is the rank of v. Okay. So sometimes the name for this is the refined term class. Uh, why refined? So uh, actually, this this here. This space is star star term of V. So it's this quotient here. So it's it can be identified or by definition by definition, let's say of, with a cohomology of V with support in the zero section. So let's say S0 of X. Okay. So this is why it's refined. So it's a, a class in, in some sense it's the class uh, of a of a zero section of V, but seen as supported, that's as supported in this uh, in this thing here. So in particular, it's non non trivial. Okay. <coughs> and uh, according to this definition, what you get is the following: uh, you get the Tom isomorphism. <coughs> so you have a map from uh, E star star of X going to E star star of the term space of V, which to some lambda associate lambda times term class of V, refined term class. Okay, so <coughs> you can see that there's, uh, there's a really this, this this space here has really an action of a uh, uh, cohomology of x. It's, it, it acts as a ring of coefficients. And uh, this is an isomorphism by definition, OK? So as I said, this is of uh, rank n plus 1 over e. It's a free e star star x module of rank n plus 1. This one of rank n. So because this is a split sequence here, it's a one-dimensional e star star x module, so an invertible e star star x module. and the the theory of, of turn classes give me some class, this term class, which is a basis, a canonical basis of this uh, space here. So that's uh, another characteristic class here. But there's a, a remark or an example, I don't know. Mark. <coughs> Actually, this, this term class here can be computed as a turn class. And so what you, you look at the Universal quotient space, so it's like this P star E going to C. <coughs> so, this, so this is the universal uh, quotient vector bundle on P of E plus one, uh, or V plus one, sorry. And, and what you get out of uh, uh, the Witten, uh, witness M formula is that the term class of V is actually equal to the nth term class of Xi. Okay. So the, the non-refined term class is a particular case, a case of term class. <coughs> okay, and another, another remark is that you can, you can also see the, this term isomorphism internally. <coughs> and for this, uh, for this what you do is if you take the projection from X to S, so it's not the same P, sorry, <coughs> then you define E X. So it's something that already appeared as a pullback here. And the term isomorphism can be rewritten. So the term class is actually, uh, uh, this term class here is actually a map from term of V to uh, 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 E twisted n times, shifted 2n times. And what you get here, it's um, another term class. In some sense, maybe it's gamma multiplication by term. And it gives a map from e e e x to e x n to n. <coughs> it's an isomorphism 
is an actually of uh, x modules in the weak sense. Okay. Uh, sorry, I forgot to write the x tensor term of v. Okay, so I, how do you build this map? So you have a map, as I said, from the term space of v to uh, uh, E x n to n, so you because you can re work relatively to E x, uh, <coughs> and then by adjunction it, it it gives a map of uh, of E x module because this is uh, somehow a free E x module generated by term space v, and then you check that this map is an isomorphism just because uh, by the Yoneda lemma. Okay, so it's a way of seeing uh, term uh, the term isomorphism internally. It will be useful in the next course. Okay, so are there questions at this point? Is, uh, sorry, uh, it's just, uh, it means that in some sense, this map is multiplication by the term, term class. So it's just a notation. I could, I could also write term bar V, but uh, it, it, uh, it makes some confusion with this uh, element here. So it's just to... <coughs> It should be, if I rewrite, it should be gamma tom bar v. And it means multiplication by a tom class. Okay, yeah? Yeah? Uh, sorry, it's a one, yeah? This one? Ah, yeah, it's on PV plus one. Uh, uh, so uh, it's projection to X, and so you have. Uh, the vector bundle, I think it's the correct way. So uh, you have a vector bundle V on X, you pull it back here, and you take this uh, quotient space. I think it's the correct draw. Uh, maybe I, uh, wait, wait, wait. I think I got it wrong. It's, uh, yeah, you're right, sorry. Because it must be of rank N. So this is of rank n plus one. You, you mod out by this line bundle. So this is of rank n, and this is sorry. Yeah, yeah that's you, you're definitely right. You have to take this. Thanks. Is it okay? Great. <coughs> okay. Next, I move on to cobordism. So let me define the co cobordism ring spectrum, second part. So first I recall, so we have seen this classifying space. So in the first lecture, I, I considered BGM, but you can also consider BGLN. So in the A1 homotopy category, this is the same thing as the co-limit of N of the Grassmannian on N vector bundles into a n, sorry, and goes to infinity. Okay, so it's an infinite Grassmannian. <coughs> and uh, okay, it plays the same role than, than BGM. On this, uh, on this object, so uh, you have a tautological rank n vector bundle. And we can, we can work at uh, Niznevich locally without A1 invariance at some point. Uh, uh, what you get is that, uh, so these are rank N universal vector bundles. That's fine. <coughs> okay, and if you look at this vector bundle, again, gamma N plus A1, it's a rank N plus one vector bundle, so it always, it, it will be classified by a map to be GLN plus one. Um, 
out of this you get a map to gamma n plus 1 okay by the universal property actually you can even uh, you can maybe I will do this gamma n plus r like this for any integer r <coughs> And so in particular, what you get out of this is that term space of gamma n plus a r goes to the term space of gamma n plus r. Okay, but you can compute this uh, object in the A1 homotopy category. And uh, so it's a, it's a computation that you, are, you have to make, but it's not so difficult. It's a computation of a co homotopy co cofiber. It's actually the term space of gamma n tensor the term space of a r. <coughs> so, uh, according to my definition, oh sorry, I should not. Uh, according to that definition, this is just the twist, twist r r times and shift to r times. So it's just a tensor product with p one smash r r. Okay. So actually, I get a tower. I can move this. So yeah, let's say, let's rewrite this. I get a map from the term space of gamma r to the term. I mean, it's infinite suspension. If I go to the stable homotopy category now, term gamma n plus r, I can untwist and I get maps like this. because this is the, oh, the tensor inverse stably of this term space here. And in particular, I get a tower of stable term spaces like this, sigma infinity, term gamma one minus one, shift minus two, and so on. Sigma infinity, term gamma n minus n, minus 2n, okay, and it goes like this, and then I define the more design spectrum, so I can, I, I, implicitly I was working on the s, so now I indicate the base as the co-limit of this tower. The homotopy co-limit. So of course you have to, to, to pay attention. You have to get a, a, <coughs> a well-defined object in order to be able to take the homotopy co-limit. So <coughs> but it does not, it's not so, uh, just to the definition it's not so important. But then what you get is that you can, you, you also can define pairing like this, gamma n cos gamma m to gamma n plus m. And out of this you can, define a, a, a ring structure on this object. But for this, you have to pay more attention again. And uh, in the end, to get, uh, you can define an, a, a strict, an infi infinity ring structure on NGL out of these maps. But you have, for this, you have to, to use the, the so-called J-homomorphism that was defined by, uh, by uh, Maria at some point. So <coughs> maybe just a remark. I mean, you can you can also proceed by uh, by hand, but uh, so there is a construction of Tom Marman and Mark Coyua, which is the J homomorphism, which is actually just a lifting of this. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot the ring infinity, which is actually uh, a lifting of this functor into an infinity functor. So. It's a map going to the Quillen K space of S to uh, the tensor invertible object of SH. S and it's an in infinity functor. Functor. Oops. So which maps the class of B in some sense? 
to the pump space of V. Okay. Using uh, this this object, using this construction, you get a, a really easy way to define this object MGLS as a commutative algebra in the infinity categories called sense and S H of S. Okay. Or uh, actually, you can you can also actually we are only interested in the in the ring structure on MGL on at the f from the at the weak sense and you can you can uh, directly use this construction for this okay so this is the various key algebraic cobordism ring spectrum okay And it will play the role, the same role than uh, MU plays in uh, classical stable homotopy theory. <coughs> so just uh, f first of all, I just have a lemma. Actually, so this space is uh, oriented, but to see this, we need to prove this. There exists a canonical, canonical uh, A1 weak equivalence from the term space of gamma 1. So remember, this gamma 1 is a, is a line bundle on, on BGM, on P infinity, and it's isomorphic to BGM, which, by the way, is isomorphic to P infinity of S. OK, so that's surprising, a priori. How do you get this? Maybe just to give some proof. So you look at the in inclusion of p n minus one into p n, let's say over s. So this is a regular closed dimension of co-dimension one. <coughs> closed co-dimension one, and you can check that the normal bundle, so the normal bundle of this immersion, is actually isomorphic to the canonical line bundle on p n minus one. <coughs> okay, and moreover, what you know is that the open complement of this uh, <coughs> of this immersion is actually uh, the affine space a n of s, so it's contractible. Okay, so. <coughs> Now, I recall that uh, from the purity theorem, which was explained by, by Fabien uh, uh, at the beginning of the first week, I think, this is isomorphic to the term space of a normal bundle. This, this quotient here, uh, because uh, Pn, Pn minus 1 s is smooth over s, so this is computed in H A1 of s. Uh, this is isomorphic to the term space of a normal bundle, M U N, so which is the term space of O minus one. I don't uh, indicate the, the thing, but this thi this thing here, it's just P N modulo A N of S. So it's uh, because A N of S is contractible. It's just P N of S. Maybe so. What what we get actually is a, an isomorphic or an, an isomorphism of pointed spaces. Okay, and now then, but you just uh, you just uh, pass to the limit. Go limit when n goes to infinity. Okay, then you'll get you'll get p infinity here, and here you'll get the term space of gamma one by definition. Isn't it okay? Okay, great. So. What do we get out of this An interesting map? <coughs> because of my definition of a term space as a co-limit, so actually in, uh, yeah. <coughs> there is a canonical map uh, 
from some space of gamma 1 minus 1 minus 2 which is in some sense the first layer of, uh, of the corresponding P1 spectrum of MGL um, it goes to MGL S by definition okay but now this corresponds to a map that I will denote C MGL tom gamma 1 is P infinity and I can put this on the right and it gives you a map like this okay so in other, in other wor words it's a <coughs> an element in MGL 2 1 of P infinity of S okay then you can you can you can check that the <coughs> restriction of this uh, this class to p1 actually corresponds to the inclusion of, uh, of this part here sigma infinity of tom gamma zero which is just uh, by the way sigma infinity of s plus so the restriction of cmgl to <coughs> to p1 of s will corresponds to the map tom gamma zero going to MGLS, which is the unit of the uh, ring spectrum structure. Okay. So in, in some sense, this is just uh, what we have proved is that CMGLS up to some ident identification is a unit of MGL. Okay, so in other words, this, uh, <coughs> this class here is an orientation. MGLS so to so say it's a canonical orientation so it's it's built in the construction of MGL okay so now if you if you remember that for an orientable uh, cohomology I have defined these term classes which give gives term isomorphism you can try to see that there's a, there will be a, a link between uh, term classes and uh, and maps to MGL and so this leads us to the main theorem which is the new universal property of the uh, cobordism for ring spectra so this theorem uh, so I will sketch the proof but so as I uh, as I said it's 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 really uh, a transportation of classical method in stable homotopy theory but it took some time to to make it right so there were several uh, step in prove this, proving this so maybe I, I give dates so Fezzosi was the first to prove this over a field then there was uh, Panin Piminov and Randings which gives another proof I think it's 2007 which was uh, maybe better no but still over a field and f finally there was there's this work of uh, Nico Norman uh, Paul Arne Othar and Marcus Fitzek two thousand eight which proved this over any base so in the in the context where I am and so this theorem so <laughs> says the following so let's E be a motivic ring spectrum over S so some cohomology theory so there, uh, there is a bijection between the following two sets <coughs> first the orientation C of E not this set can be empty but that does not matter and second one the map phi from MGL S to E which are ring map of weak, uh, of, uh, of weak uh, ring spectrum okay and the, and the map actually so there is a map from 2 
to 1, which is obvious. It associates to phi, the map phi, the class phi upper star of CMGL. Okay, so this map phi, of course, induces a, a, a morphism of cohomology theory for M, from MGL star star to E star star, star star. This class here belongs in degree two one, and you can, when you look at its image in E two one, it's clear that it will be an orientation because uh, the, the we are just looking at some constraint with respect to pullbacks and the unit of the uh, ring spectrum, and, the, uh, and this map is uh, preserves the unit. Okay. <coughs> so, in other words, MGL as a ring spectrum is a universal is it's a universal oriented motivic ring spectrum. <coughs> from this theorem, okay? <coughs> Just like uh, mu for complex-oriented uh, ring spectra. So maybe I have time to give the, the proof. So actually the proof is, uh, is classical in some sense. <coughs> and and it, I give a proof, I don't give all the details, but There are three steps. So some first step is the computation of the cohomology. Let's E, C, E oriented. Uh, when, when this is the case, you can compute the cohomology of BGL infinity. And it will be isomorphic to the limit over N of the cohomology of BGL N. So first thing, and second thing is that it's actually given by the cohomology of the base, so, uh, and it's a power theory into C1, C2, Cn, and these classes are uh, represented by the churn classes of the tautological uh, bundle on BGLN, okay? So there is an information which is uh, hidden here uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a, a trick that uh, comes always into this uh, this theory of oriented com classes and cohomology. Uh, it's that for in in this case, so this BGL infinity is a colimit. You always have a so-called Milner sequence. There is a lim one cohomology of BGL n going to the cohomology of BGL infinity, which is the co-limit, and sorry, there is a map here, at n. Okay, and this assertion here says that this lim1 vanishes, okay. This is because you can, you can prove that, uh, uh, you can prove inductively that this uh, cis projective system actually satisfies the meta Gleffler condition, okay? So when you, you go into the second step, always for <coughs> an oriented cohomology theory. So by the way, uh, uh, this computation of a cohomology of, of Grassmannian was, uh, I, was, was uh, the trick that uh, both Pontryagin and Chern uses to build the, their classes. So Pontryagin classes and Chern classes. But okay, here we have uh, this nice, uh, this nice way of, uh, of, of doing things. We first, we just compute the cohomology of P infinity, which is the BGL one. And it's, it's sufficient then to get the cohomology of this, to build the first the churn classes, and then comp compute the cohomology here. Okay, so it's just a, a trick. Second step is the, to compute the cohomology of uh, MGL. <coughs> and so MGL, as we have seen, it's, uh, it's also a co-limit. So this space wa was defined as a homotopy limit, And in this case, you also have a Milner exact sequence. So there is limit on N of E. So maybe I will do this star plus N of a term space of gamma N. This is surjective. So I, I, in, in the definition, I had minus N minus 2N. But because I'm computing cohomology, I can pass this N in the degree here. 
and there is a limb one <coughs> by the same thing e star star well, okay I, I don't indicate the decree anymore here okay but what we know is that we have term classes here because e is oriented so this is actually isomorphic by the term isomorphism to e star star of bgln the base of gamma n times let's say the term the refined term class gamma n so <coughs> i just put it for <coughs> to prove it and and we know that this uh, this object here satisfy the metag leffler condition so again this is zero now and we have an isomorphism of the, of the cohomology of mgl and this limit here so if we look at the sequence term bar gamma zero term bar gamma one blah 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 It gives us it gives us an element here, but this is an isomorphism, so it, it lifts uniquely, uh, gives uniquely uh, some a kind of term term class gamma infinity if you want in the cohomology, and actually it will be of degree zero zero mgls. Okay. In other words, this is a map. Uh, well, I should write this phi c because uh, it, it's, it's a map from MGLS to E, okay? Then the third step, uh, I will just say it with, with words, is to identify the condition that guarantee that this, uh, this map is a ring map here. Uh, uh, uh. And when C is an orientation, you can check that it's a ring map. Uh, and also you, you, you will check that the this association which, with which to an orientation map gives a, a, a ring map is a, an, a reciproc to this, uh, this map here, okay? So this is quite straightforward, but there's, uh, there are things to, be, to pay attention. Are there questions? Okay, let's move on. So MGL has a, this universal property like MU and now we can go on towards, uh, I don't know, <coughs> motivic chromatic homotopy theory, even if it's not uh, completely clear now what, what, what it should be. So the next step is uh, the notion of formal group law. So I will give recall. So let's let's from uh, let's 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 uh, give a definition from the algebraic geometric point of view. So uh, a formal group of dimension one is I I will it's all, it's all, it's always intended that it's a Nabilian group. So it's a Nabilian group object structure on the formal scheme on the formal scheme scheme <coughs> of associated with uh, sorry r of x double, double bracket, bracket x okay so a formal group scheme of dimension one over some ring r <coughs> is such a thing, and here uh, we see this on, as an adic ring with respect to uh, the, the, the topology defined by the ideal x. Okay, so that's the formal definition that you always see, it's always mentioned at some point, but uh, actually there's a, it corresponds to a concrete definition which is, uh, it corresponds to the data, the data. So the multiplication here corresponds to the data of f x y in it's a power series with coefficient in R, which in two variables, x and y. Okay, it's supposed to be the addition. So it's supposed to be x plus y in a formal sense. And it should satisfy the 
the axiom of a, of a group. So what is this? It's a neutral element. It says fx0 is f0 x is x. Okay. There is also the commutativity f x y. So all these uh, all these equalities are equalities of power series is f y x. And the last one, which is the more the most uh, difficult to describe combinatorially, is the associativity. And it says that f of x f x y z is equal to f of x f y z okay so uh, uh, just a word about this uh, this axiom here uh, so a priori you cannot substitute uh, you cannot always substitute a power theory with two variables in in in, in another power theory except if uh, this condition yeah. holds here so because of this this one here this power theory is substituable if you want into this one and you get the correct expression and you can uh, <coughs> give a meaning to this expression okay so this is an inequality in r x y z so there's a lot to check it's very difficult a priori to define this uh, to describe this combinatorially but, uh, but you can if you want okay and maybe a remark is that out of this Axiom, it implies the, another axiom, it's the inverse element. So there exists an M of X in R of X, which plays the role of the inverse element, so that F of X, M of X is equal to zero. Okay, so this axiom is actually follows from this, uh, this one here. Okay, so if you have never seen this, uh, it's, it can be very surprising, but okay, if you, if you write carefully what's a, a formal group uh, object structure, you will exactly fall into this, uh, <coughs> to this definition. Then maybe So in general, it's complicated to define formal groups, except in two cases. So maybe these are the two main examples. And I would say that it's uh, OK. Maybe I should introduce. So we, we always uh, use the same notation for formal group laws. So concretely, this is given by coefficient. And it's a map. It's something like that. It's always a power series of, of a form x plus y because of these axiom plus sum from y j of a y j x y y j so <coughs> one of the two index must be bigger than two here okay and so we use this uh, this we, we, we always use this notation for the coefficient of a formal group law so these are just elements of r <coughs> so that a y j is equal to a j i Okay, so there are only the only example with finite coefficients with a finite number of coefficients are as follows, and you can check that uh, the, the, the only one first it's the stupid one, x plus y, called the additive formal group law. So usually it's, it's quite universal to, uh, to use this shortcut for formal group law. And the second one is the so-called multiplicative, and it depends on some parameter. f x plus y is x plus y plus u x y, and it's called the multiplicative. FGL, there's a 
there's no constraint on air on, on you. Can be any element on you. Of you. Okay. <coughs> uh, before going into the link with uh, oriented ring spectrum, I just want to explain what 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 we can define as morphism in this uh, in this setting. So, first of all, there is a kind of is there is a base changer. Uh, Procedure. So if we have a map from phi from R to R prime, and if we have some formal group law over R, we can see it as a, as a formal group law over R prime from an obvious way. So it's just a base change. It's R prime X, Y. It's just you apply phi at all the coefficients of x, y, and q. Okay. Is this OK? So you have all this a, y, j, and you see them into r prime. Then uh, it's clear that the, the, the axioms will be satisfied. OK? The second one is the notion of isomorphism. Of formal group law. So now we look at f and fxy, jxy, two formal group laws over the same ring, of R. <coughs> then an isomorphism, theta from f to g, is a power theory, theta of x in R bracket of x, such that theta of 0 is 0. And uh, uh, well, actually, should say something like this later. Theta of x is of the form u times x plus some coefficients. So there's no constant term. And also, u is invertible in R. And you have the following relation, which express <coughs> the fact that theta is uh, morphism of the underlying formal group. So it says that theta of f x y is equal to g theta of x theta of y. That's it. <coughs> and you can check that, uh, again, all these uh, expressions have a good meaning because uh, there's no constant term here. OK, by the way, we say, we say that theta is strict if uh, u equal 1. OK. Uh, and now you can define the last thing, a morphism of FGL. So if you have some f x y uh, over some ring r and another formal group law, but over some other ring R prime. Uh, a morphism of formal group law like this will be uh, a pair, theta and phi, <coughs> such that phi from R to R prime is a morphism of ring. And theta is uh, an isomorphism from F extended to R prime xy to j. And so usually I denote by fgl like this. This leads to a category. fgl, and, and, and if, you, if you're familiar with this kind of things, you can see that fgl is actually a fibered category over the category of rings. <coughs> this is why we have this strange thing here. Now I can uh, I can recall the first step of a theorem of Lazar. You can check very easily that uh, there exists a universal formal group law. So there exists an initial object, initial object of this category, FGL. 
and it's called the laser ring. Uh, so it's uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, should have done the other way. So there is some abstractly there is some ring here of coefficient and a formal group law on this ring such that any formal group law admits a, a map uh, from this object to it. Okay. This is, at this point, this is just formal, but we will see in the end of the talk uh, more information on this uh, Lazard ring. So this is called the Lazard ring. Okay. So this is classical stuff. Now I want to come back to uh, my oriented cohomology theory. Oh, okay. <coughs> so uh, GM is an abelian group, so in any case, we will know that BGM is an, uh, is an H space. But uh, remember that this has a model, p, p infinity of S, uh, which is an in scheme, an in smooth S scheme. And actually, because this is a, a modular space, you can check that uh, uh, this object has an abelian group structure. Come inside in this category of in smooth scheme given by uh, uh, lambda lambda prime goes to lambda tensor lambda prime and the inverse is lambda goes to lambda dual, okay? Uh, so this gives us a map, actually. A multiplication map, sigma from P infinity of S times P infinity of S going to P infinity. So it can be represented by the Segre map, but I, I will pass this detail. <coughs> okay, it's a co-limit of Segre maps actually. And now if we have E, uh, an, orient an oriented ring spectrum, so we know that uh, uh, the cohomology of P infinity is uh, from the projective bundle formula. We know that cohomology of P infinity of S is maybe let's let's take X is the same thing as the as the power series over the cohomology uh, of X. Okay, it's a co-limit of free E star X module and generated by C. Uh, uh, and so in particular, we see that this map here, sigma upper star, corresponds to a map like this, e star star of S bracket, double bracket C. And it goes, so if you compute the cohomology of this thing using this formula, sorry, this will go to a double power series, e star star S double bracket X, Y, like this, okay? Just use the projective bundle formula. And so in particular, the, the class C goes to sigma upper star of C, which is a, a power theory, let's call it F, F, C, X, Y, into the variable X and Y. And uh, what you can check is that because this is, uh, uh, this P infinity is actually an abelian group, and you apply a contravariant functor, uh, it, 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 it is sent very formally to some co as a co-group structure and it, it, it implies that this actually <coughs> when did you see that this is a formal group law fcxy is a formal group law with coefficients in uh, this big bagreded ring e star star of s okay <coughs> so what we have done is that we, we have uh, associated to any uh, oriented cohomology, cohomotivic ring spectrum, an FGL, which is uh, canonically defined, okay? And this works exactly as in topology, by the way. <coughs> so this answers questions that, uh, that were already asked. Maybe the, the example that we add is that for motivic cohomology, HMDS, for uh, H epsilon, a mixed veil cohomology, so Durham mixed 
they cohomology, Durham, rigid, and so on. Uh, and also Betty cohomology, so these, uh, the associated FGL is uh, additive. Okay, but you can check also that for uh, KGL, K theory spectrum, then the associated F FG. So let's the associated formal group law. Let's let, let me write it like this. This has a canonical orientation that I defined earlier. It's the multiplicative one, and it's actually x plus y minus beta minus one x y. If I'm not wrong, okay. <coughs> So uh, it just 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 one word. So uh, as I said, this this theory, this power theory is a, is a, of this form: h y j s x y y j. Uh, so this is defined actually for any scheme. You can you can take pullback and define this for a scheme s x over s. But these classes will be stable by pullback formally. And what you can check also is that a y j of S belongs, so it belongs in this ring here, but it, it admits some degree, so I think it's A2 minus 2I, two 1, uh, 2I plus J, sorry, comma 1 minus I plus J of S. So actually it lives in negative degree in the, in the, the cohomology. Okay, so to end my, my talk, I, I will finish with uh, a theorem. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh. Can I take two minutes just to state the theorem? What? In, in here? Okay. So, <coughs> so this theorem is due to many people. So there is le so it's it's in, it's indicated in uh, in my notes, and uh, it says that uh, MGLS uh, has the universal formal group law so meaning in particular that MGL sorry MGL so it's two star star of S is isomorphic to L in this under this assumption if S is the spectrum of a field K of characteristic zero of the okay of exponent characteristic e then then I have to invert e or uh, let's say s is a dvr uh, of mixed characteristic zero e okay <coughs> And it's, it's actually conjectured that uh, uh, MGL has, has this formal group law for S local regular. But, but, but then uh, what I should say is that this, this theorem is the analog of Quillen uh, theorem for MU, which, which actually uh, um, started many, many development in stable homotopy theory. Okay, so sorry for having been a bit too long. Thanks. And if you have questions. If you have questions, so I indicate uh, an idea of a proof of this thing. In Thank the you notes. very much.